now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, Lady Adriana Beardsley had planned one of the most bizarre garden parties in history. A country home at Stokely House was being given over to a practical demonstration of the new FF-70 rifle. Several couples had been allocated to prove the effectiveness of this secret weapon. Lady Adriana herself gave the starting orders. Are you ready? Yes. At a point known to each of the two men, exactly 100 yards away from each other, we've placed a loaded rifle. The safety catches off. So when I give the command... On your mark? Yes, sir. Go. The two men leapt forward, anger in their eyes, murder in their hearts. The demonstration was underway. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed fails in his bid to outwit Colonel Aristides, and Mrs. Peel faces the marksmanship of Conrad Beardsley, who aims to kill... ...straight from the shoulder. Mrs. Peel had found herself in some tough spots in her time, but this was one of the most dangerous yet. She knew that Conrad was a psychopathic killer. He'd already tried to murder her, and now it was going to be made legal in the demonstration of the FF-70. She was placed with the competitors, unable to communicate with John Steed, who stood on the terrace with Adriana Beardsley, Colonel Aristides, and other interested revolutionaries. Sooner or later, she was going to have to go out there into those beautiful grounds and be hunted down, pitting her wits and skill against one of the world's top marksmen. In the meantime... She watched with growing horror as the two men rushed for their respective guns. Jackson was making slightly better time. He leapt over flower beds, circled the fountains. Erickson, in the other direction, found his rifle leaning up against a tree. He slithered to a stop and tripped. The slip gave Jackson that split second of time that he needed. He whipped his rifle up to his shoulder and sent a blast across the grounds. Erickson fell where he stood. Steed turned to the colonel. A recruitment must have its problems for this kind of thing. Uh, these men are mercenaries. They aren't playing games. Are they all volunteers? Uh, they do get a, a short-term contract. If they get away with it, and naturally they all believe they will, they can retire with a packet of money at the age of 22 or 3. They think the risk is worth it. The precarious lives some youngsters will lead. No, they are prepared to take the chances. All except Conrad, of course. Oh? And what's his attitude? Oh, he does it because he likes it. Between you and me, Steed. I think Conrad's just a little, um, well, strange in the head. Only Conrad? What about Lady Adriana? Ah, uh, she spoils him, you know. She's never been able to refuse her brother anything. Not even blood sports. Jackson has a glass of champagne. Aren't you going to congratulate him, Steve? Are you impressed by the demonstration? You should try it on tour. Belfast, perhaps? Aren't you bidding? I think so. Uh, I'm afraid Steed has decided against doing the gentlemanly thing. You mean he won't join you in an attempt to overthrow the president? Uh, afraid not. I even promised him the Ministry of Foreign Aid. And he turned it down. He must be a man of integrity. Uh, you never know with Steed. You just never know. The next pair have shown us a straight firing duel. I think the final bite should be most interesting. We have a guest. Excuse me, I must make an announcement. Lady Beardsley moved off to address her guests. Steed, noticing Mrs. Peel being led out, pushed forward with interest. 
gentlemen, the set piece of the afternoon, my chief demonstrator and the guest. Oh. Now, your forces, gentlemen, from necessity, have often to rely on manpower, which is, with respect, not always in the higher state of training. Very often, in the forces of a coup d'etat, you use women. <laughs> By happy accident, my brother and I are now able to show you that SF-70 can be easily handled by a woman. Oh. Mrs. Peel, forward, please. Conrad? I've been looking forward to this moment, Mrs. Peel. There's no magazine in my rifle. Your magazine, Mrs. Peel, is down there, on your left. Mrs. Peel squinted down into the garden and the stone wall. Ready? Begin. Mrs. Peel needed no second bidding. She charged forward with her rifle, whipped over the wall, grabbing the magazine as she did so. On the safety of the other side, she clipped it into the rifle and fell into the protection of a flower bed. Uh, Lady Beardsley, I think we've seen enough of this. I'm convinced I'm a busy man. You're interested in talking money. Why, Mr. Steve? You wish to call it off? You can continue your game some other time. Let's talk money now, or I'm not interested in the sale. Oh, very well. Uh, I am sorry, gentlemen. Stay where you are, Mrs. Peel. Conrad, the demonstration is halted. Uh, temporarily. Please return to the hut. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh no. No. Ah, look here, it's uh, nothing to do with Steed. I... I'd like to please all my customers. We'll have the auction now. And whoever bids high... Gets the rifles. <laughs> and the demonstration, if he wants. Oh, that's not fair. I've made I... up my mind. The winner gets the gun. And Mrs. Peel. Conrad could hardly contain himself as protestingly he was led into the house. Mrs. Peel, aware that she'd gained a sudden reprieve, looked appealingly at Steve. But he was engaged in listening to Lady Beardsley. Down to business then, gentlemen. You've seen the weapon in action? Noted its lethal capacity? Been impressed by its versatility? Uh, the offer then is 3,000 mint-conditioned examples of the FF-70. Enough, I might say, to guarantee success in any venture. Ready, Mr. Steed? The reserve price. Thank you. Mr. Steed bids 70,000 pounds. 100,000. Oh. Any advance on 100,000? 100,000 and 1,000. 150. 180. 119. 200. 215. 300. 300. Am I bid higher? Uh, no. The goods are mine, I think. <laughs> no, no, no. Not quite, Mr. Steed. Colonel Aristides lodged a deposit with me some months ago. A deposit? Well, why didn't you ask me for one? Rather pointless, Mr. Steed, considering that you only arrived this afternoon. And you do represent a head of state. How much did the Colonel give you? Fifty thousand pounds. So I have two bids of three hundred thousand. No more cash, Mr. Steed? Uh, no more cash. A colonel? The colonel gave an oily grin, reached into his case. I can manage an extra 10,000. Mr. Fee? Uh, grandfather's gold watch, worth 75 pounds of a penny, goes to. I also have the watch, a gift from the president. Oh, no good, it's always stopping. Oh, now, gentlemen, please, you know the customer of the house. Cash only. What about my car? The only one of its kind, worth several thousands, no punctures. And I had an oil change yesterday. Mr. Steed, I must remind you that such suggestions are not cash. Sorry. For the second time of asking. Going, going, gone. Oh, bad luck, Steed. Sorry. Yes, so am I. What about Mrs. Peel? Ah, yes. You would be interested, Conrad. What about her, Colonel? <laughs> Let the demonstration continue. On the terrace, some time later, the atmosphere was tense and everything was silent. Adriana was as radiant as ever. She should be, having gained all that money. The Colonel, also in high spirits, applauded as Conrad and Emma Peel, with their rifles at the ready, again took to the grounds. Adriana smiled. Cheer up, Mr. Steve. At least it's not you going out there. Your brother is a good marksman. Oh, oh, the finest in the world. The creature has yet to be born that he can't kill with a single bullet. He prides himself on it. I see. 
Steed was privately thinking that he'd like to have a go at Conrad himself, but his attention was distracted by Adriana's call. On your marks, get set, go. Conrad made towards the wood, Mrs. Peel to the garden. Steed screwed up his eyes to see against the October sun. Both fighters had vanished. Conrad had the advantage of knowing the layout. Hmm. So you've chosen that path, have you? Round by the sunken garden. Now, the moment you appear by that large ornamental urn, you'll give me a perfect target. Hmm. The peacocks are out. That'll unnerve her. But to Mrs. Peel. Huh. Think I'm going to be thrown by those peacocks, do they? Hmm. Not round the front of that white urn. Make me a sitting duck. No, the other way round. Setting sun behind me. He's going to the north and he'll have to come out of that clearing. <coughs> She'll let off a shot at that peacock sooner or later. Let's try the old trick of throwing a stone by the urn. Now! Conrad lobbed a round stone across the urn by the place the peacock stood. Huh. Silly trick. I'm not falling for that one. Conrad, so sure that Mrs. Peel was hidden in the shrubbery by the urn, broke cover fast. <laughs> Mrs. Peel fired from the shoulder. Uh, ah, so I was right. You are there. Mrs. Peel broke cover before he could fire and tore across the lawn, firing from the hip. Here goes. Mrs. Peel stood still. Conrad sighted the rifle and fired. <laughs> Mrs. Peel threw up her hands, her body jerking forward. The rifle flew forward and crashed into the shrubbery. She lay still. Oh, oh, very good indeed. Bravo. Oh, very good. Steed looked across at Mrs. Peel's motionless body. The crowd swarmed around Conrad to congratulate him on the kill. Out on the lawn, Mrs. Peel slowly opened one eye and then closed it again quickly. Smart girl. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.